The Ranfurly Shield, the log of wood, it's been called the Holy Grail of New Zealand rugby. The 5th Earl of Ranfurly, Governor at the time, presented it for interprovincial competition in 1902. Auckland, because they had the best playing record, were the first holders. Holding the shield means both joy and prestige. Nearly 500 shield matches have been played, many of them classics, but no shield rivalry rivals that of Canterbury and Auckland. Two mighty sides came together in a match in 1985 that had been talked about for months beforehand. It will be talked about for years to come. It was billed as the match of the century, and it was. Into Hobbs, who's had an excellent game. Away to Wayne Smith. A strong run by Wayne Smith. And a brilliant try for Wayne Smith. The most brilliant solo try. The try that won the shield for Canterbury in 1982, starting a reign that was to take them out to equal Auckland's record of 25 successive defences. Hypey. I mean, we'd had the shield for a long time, and that 3ZB we'd been hyping at left, right, and centre from right before the Wellington game in '82 when we won. I could sympathise with the guys that were working in town, and they couldn't walk down the street without being stopped every five metres, and you know, they must have got a bit wary with time. But then again, that that's what makes shield rugby, and, and that interest was what made it, I guess, memorable for us. What we advised most of the Canterbury guys was not to listen to our show for at least two, three days before the build-up because if they did, they'd think they were walking on water all the time and we, we made them out to be gods. Everything at this Auckland side who seemed to be struggling to hold it together. In 83, Auckland came to Lancaster Park confident of winning the Shield. Instead, they returned north with red faces, humiliated. Canterbury backs winning so much ball. He sets up Dale Atkins. There's the big number eight. Yes! His tenth try of the season. The national champions are being taken apart limb by limb. I think in 1983 uh, I made some fundamental errors uh, which were probably not to think through the, the type of uh, hype that's associated with the game in Canterbury. Um, and we got uh, tied up with that in pre-match uh, parades and got involved in it, uh, took our focus away. Two years on, Auckland kept away from the hype, went to ground. The loss still rankled and Coach Hart was determined that past mistakes would not be repeated, in public or with the press. I'd said to the team that uh, from the uh, Monday uh, that I would take the media load and that they would be, I would try to keep them out of it, for only one reason, to protect them. We thought they'd all died. Um, we couldn't find them anywhere. We searched cemeteries, everything, but uh, we couldn't find them. They were really non-existent in Canterbury. We had grizz masks for them. We put our predictions in, in little packs. And we dropped in red and black um, razors so that they wouldn't, you know, make too much of a mess in the hotel room when they're slitting their wrists after the game. It wasn't all one-sided. The crowd through the turnstiles included a large number of northerners. The Auckland public were down there in quite some numbers. They gave the team support. Uh, it was just a whole positive attitude by everybody when they went down there because it's pretty hard to uh, perform in Christchurch at Lancaster Park with the uh, parochialism that's uh, associated with Lancaster Park. A great occasion made greater by Canterbury's gesture in making this the day we could see a new record of successful defences. I had the job of making out the challenges for the year uh, at the start of the season and and put it in front of them. They asked me did I want to leave it at that and, and I said yes, I think it was fair enough. We were going to take a record away from them if we had won 
and I was giving them the opportunity of saving it. Canterbury created the opportunity. I mean, Canterbury didn't need to play Auckland. They could have tried to go for the soft way to get the record and give Auckland a game after they'd got it. I admire Gris Wiley and his Canterbury Union for putting the game on the line. Lancaster Park in Christchurch is not just a great rugby ground, it's a great sporting ground. But few sporting occasions in the history of the park will live in the memory like this one. A final act before kickoff. Canterbury players break with tradition to acknowledge their supporters. I remember feeling high when we did it. We realised that this was a big one, they realised it was a big one. And perhaps looking back on it now, it was one of those things that perhaps in the back of the player's mind that they, they thought it was it. It probably ref reflected the fact that we'd blown it up too much in our own minds. Time on and Grant Fox to start the match. The chance of Canterbury, Canterbury rang loud as Grant Fox, Fox kicked off. Albert Anderson but they would soon die. But the first impetus comes from Auckland in the supercharged match all curtain. Well, the atmosphere is absolutely phenomenal and the Canterbury crowd went and clapped on both sides before the game started, which I thought was great psychological warfare as well. And I think it'll be a terribly tight game. And the team to score first will have a tremendous psychological advantage, I would say. The match of the century was underway. kick for Grant Fox, just two and a half minutes gone in the game. John Hart had told his players they were going into a cauldron of fire. From early on, they proved equal to the task. Real pressure on Grant Fox, but he responded magnificently, and that's the score just three minutes into the match. I remember the first shot at goal, which I may have got, um, trying to get my legs to move. <laughs> and towards the ball was pretty hard. I was sort of standing saying, move, move. Um, you know, the nerves were there. First two lineouts in the game have both gone to Canterbury, pretty much against predictions. Andy Hayden went high that time, tapped by Wetton. Now here's Canterbury on the charge. It was Don Hayes. The nerves, the crowd, affected everybody. It's the biggest crowd we've probably played in front of. A bit more nervous, I noticed that myself. I think the first time I touched the ball, I dropped it. Auckland settled down first. That targeted two players in particular. Both paid dividends. Most of the early urgency in the match coming from Auckland. Once again, pressure on Robbie Deans inside his 22. Couldn't take it again. 15 metres out. Auckland desperate for this one. Kirk. Rich is just three or four metres out. Kirk. Sherlock to Stanley. He's got the strength, Joe Stanley. The high kick, the bomb, had applied the pressure. The tactic used to good effect by Canterbury in 83. But this time, the roles were reversed. Dean's the target. We took wrong options, we made silly little mistakes. I mean, it was a tremendously fast game, and that's the nature of shield rugby. If you don't settle, if you don't focus early, you can find yourself looking down the barrel. Well, I think that Canterbury will need an incredible amount of resilience now in their last quarter hour burst to come back from the score of nine down. I didn't expect it to be that far out at this stage of the game. Deans was one player to get special attention. There was another. I remember a uh, discussion centred around uh, putting uh, pressure on Victor Simpson because we thought he might become uh, a little bit individual. Joe Stanley had vivid memories of 83 uh, where his marker, Victor Simpson, uh, may have had the better of him and uh, uh, he was one of the players that obviously we were targeting because uh, I felt under pressure he may blow. To Fox. Bray Green waiting for it. 10 metre line, his own territory. Simpson. But no mistake John by Simpson this time. Dean Instead, a somewhat controversial try coming up. Taylor. Terry Wright. He's got the pace. This could be a try for Terry Wright. Can he get it before it gets the dead ball line? Yes. Whether Terry Wright was able to force the ball with the required downward pressure would be debated. But Wayne Smith remembers the try for other reasons. They say that you forget bad things, <laughs> painful things. And uh, I can remember chasing Terry Wright when he scored his try and thinking, you know, the, the speed of the guy and things like that. Things like Simpson, one of the game's 23 past, present or future All Blacks, coming under pressure as planned. Inside is 22, Simpson has right on, could get into trouble. Now there aren't too many Canterbury players there. 
Murray Davey took it out. Kirk. Fox. Kerwin. John Kerwin. Number three for Auckland. 52,000 saw the game. I watched it from here on the press bench at the back of the main stand. And as Auckland rolled up the points in the first half, to all of us it seemed that the match of the century was turning into the farce of the century. Three tries scored by Auckland. Stanley, Wright and Kerwin, the three quarters have scored the tries. Kirk across to Kerwin. John Kerwin. Another chance here for Auckland. John Drake. Try number four. Another difficult kick for Grant Fox. And another miss for the normally deadly accurate point scoring Marvel. But few of the kicks were easy. The score now 24 to nil. Four tries plus two penalties and a conversion to Fox. Even the Canterbury faithfuls were giving up before half time. Basically the crowd is starting, quite a few of them are starting to meander out and going home. I suppose it's been so packed and they're so uncomfortable they think well if Canterbury aren't going to win we might as well go home. And I think they could be making the right decision. No, it was the wrong decision. They'd miss a treat. About the, the most vivid memory I've got of the first half is near half time when the Auckland section of the crowd were chanting, easy, easy. And I can remember going into half time, um, that was the basis of my motivation then for the next half was to try and quieten down that Auckland section of the crowd. It was one thing I didn't want the team to go out on that sort of a, a note, that uh, they deserve better than that themselves as a team. Uh, because, you know, as I say, at times I felt we played very good rugby. And so to, to, I just wanted, to, when we lost it, to, to lose in, in style. Last ditch rally in the first half from Canterbury. Deans, Smith, Taylor, held by Fox, 15 metres out from the 22. As the half drew to a close, Deans. Canterbury was on the attack. Pressure kicks like this are a taste of things to come. There was attack on the field and off. As Alex Wiley moved through the huge crowd to join his players, he was attacked from behind, one of a number of incidents involving the same two troublemakers. But he had other things on his mind. This just couldn't be happening to his boys. Auckland supporters probably thought the shield was theirs. If so, the first challenge was just minutes away, and not all were so confident at half-time. I told the team we had to go out and start the game again. Um, had a bit of a dilemma because I knew they were very tired. They'd, they'd really played the game at immense pace and uh, taken Canterbury apart. And uh, I was a little worried that we would sustain it. And the half-time message from Wiley to his players was very simple. I think there was a ball there and I just grabbed hold of the ball and I said, you know, for God's sake, get hold of this. They've scored 20-odd points. There's no reason why you can't. That's not exactly. You might have thrown in another couple of words, grizzly-type words, but... Basically, that was the concept. <laughs> he set a few records for how long he's been on at halftime when things haven't been good. I think about 10 seconds is the, is the shortest time he's been on. Canterbury, in the second Bruce half, Deans. was a team transformed. Good line up here for Canterbury. Robbie Deans, Green. There's a saying in rugby, the team again. to score first in the second half will win. A theory often disproved, but not always. Almost charged, here's Bruce Deans. The Canterbury challenge for their shield in the match of the century had begun. The Bruce Deans try raised Canterbury's hopes of a miracle recovery, but Auckland had other ideas. But again, Kern was allowed to stand in the tackle. So back come Auckland. Nine minutes gone in the second half. 24 points to four. This is the phase of play that Auckland have been dominant. 2-1, to one, though, winning the line-out to Auckland. There's another one for them. Hayden, Steve McDowell, Brooke Cowden getting very close. Another dive, McDowell, I think. Indeed it is. Try number five for Auckland. Before that, I thought we did have a chance, but that seemed to me, for some reason or other, although that's a nail in the coffin. And as it happened, Steve McDowell scoring at the f early in that second half, we thought, well, we've got them again. We've, we're, we're, out of the, we're out of the woods here. Uh, and that was sort of the last moment that we felt secure in the whole game. What a game he's had, John Kerr, when he scored a try, set up another, and hasn't allowed 
Craig Green any latitude at all. All Black wingers John Kerwin and Craig Green duelled all day. One of a number of highly competitive individual battles. But Green's moment was coming. Deans. Nicely taken by Burley. Long one from Smith to Robbie Deans. Here's Craig Green. Yes! I thought, hang on, hang on, we could do something here. And all of a sudden it just built up. Deans to attempt the conversion that would take Canterbury into double figures. Robbie Deans might have to push his way through the crowd to attempt this conversion. kick from Robbie Deans. Uh, that was a great kick from the guy. I mean, the crowd were even talking to him, as you probably heard. They managed to get some, get themselves back into the game. Uh, and they got some momentum up, and Dale Atkins going off, and then O'Gorman, the tall number eight, coming on, and they ended up with quite a lot of ball, and so they began to vary tactics. Guys were, were pushing Auckland guys off and setting up ball and, and doing things that we hadn't done in the first half, and just we just felt that yeah, we can do it. And I think, in essence, uh, we froze a bit uh, on the field. We probably didn't go and attack as we should have, and, and we allowed Canterbury back in the game. Full credit to them. Time I start to think now, Earl, to talk about new Ranfilly shield holders. Yes. Canterbury have fought valiantly in the second half, but really I don't think they the can make up this 15-point deficit Things now. didn't really go their way right from the first few moments, and you've got to go hand it to the Rangitato Yanks, too. I mean, it's been a tremendously strong performance by them. A penalty by Robbie Deans had taken the score to 28 to 13 midway through the spell and by now it was all Canterbury. If Deans was one Canterbury idol, Wayne Smith was another. He handled the ball no fewer than five times in this movement, capping it off in the best possible way. This is for Dennis Woods. Here's a chance, Wayne Smith. Well, if ever a player deserved to try this afternoon, it's Wayne Smith. He scored one in 1983 against Auckland. And Smith would and still have really a pivotal role in the game's nail-biting closing minutes. Smith again. Wayne Smith's really been in everything today. Albert Anderson took it in. And in fact, offside against Auckland. <laughs> Bruce Deans, in fact, has lost his boot, <laughs> you'll notice. Good kick, Craig Green. There it is for Chris Earl, Albert Anderson. Yes! And the score with the conversion, 28 to 23. Who would have ever believed that Canterbury had put themselves in a position where they could retain the Ranfilly Shield in the last couple of minutes? A match of such high drama needed a dramatic finish, and with just moments to go in the game, Wayne Smith seemed to be in total control. He kicked a massive up and under, it was one of the best of his whole career, and it just drifted down towards this in goal area here. And for everybody, it seemed to take an eternity to land. Smith. Like it was the highest bomb that's ever gone up. Um, and then when it bounced, I mean, it was just blind panic. I actually wanted to run the ball, and Wayne Burley had come on at second five, and he said, come on, son, we'll just stick it up in the air. So it was his decision, really. Chance for Canterbury. It's all over. Bob Francis says it's all over. And Auckland are ecstatic. Canterbury are disappointed. But my word, what a performance by Canterbury. Firstly, though, by Auckland that ran up at 24 points to nil lead at halftime, then took it out to 28 points to four. But like a great team that they are, Canterbury came back and we salute Canterbury for 25 defences, but there's a new holder of the Ranfilly Shield, Auckland winning the game here this afternoon. There would be controversy and questions about this final act and about whether there was still time to go, but the match of the century was over, leaving mixed Canterbury emotions. The greatest match I've ever seen. I wasn't looking forward to going up into the stand and making the speech to give it to Andy. Personally, uh, I was... You could almost say shattered, really, because I'd always wanted, the day that we lost the Shield, I wanted to play as well as I possibly could, 
and on that day, I didn't. I don't think it really sunk in probably until the next morning or later on that night because, uh, you know, from what I can remember now, the, the, the players didn't seem to worry about it that much. Yeah, there could have been a sense of relief. I don't know. There wasn't. The players, just as much as their supporters, wanted to keep the shield. Very emotional. There weren't many dry eyes around, I don't think. We were a very close team and um, really like brothers, and I think we all felt it together that something big had happened and it wasn't good. They should have also felt pride for what they achieved that day and throughout a long shield reign. Auckland players tell of two main emotions, relief and exhaustion. Exhilaration would come later. But the shield was theirs. The record of 25 defences set by an Auckland team in the early 60s, unbeaten. The match of the century had too many mistakes by both teams to be great rugby. It was still a great match. Auckland received a hero's welcome home. And why not? Hadn't they beaten a team of heroes?